Hey Ruganath, tell everyone about our Patreon community. Sure, Kostuba. The Wisdom of the Sages Patreon community is an incredible online yoga resource. If you like the type of yoga wisdom and culture we share on the show, then our Patreon community is a great next step. This is a listener-supported podcast, and any level of sponsorship will unlock a wide range of live and archive classes, talks, and even workshops. Raghunath teaches, I teach, and we have a host of other excellent teachers on topics ranging from yoga philosophy, asana classes, storytelling, Ayurveda, kirtan, cooking, meditation, and a lot more. We even have an incredible online bhakti 12-step recovery group. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. All right, let's get it on. Live from the Waitsfield Inn in beautiful Waitsfield, Vermont. This is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host, Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York, Kostuba Das. Welcome to the show, everybody. Welcome. It's Friday, and it is December 30th. We're winding down this year. Here with Kostuba, who settled himself in Chaupati Beach at the Chaupati Krishna Temple, where Radha Swami sort of inspired. Uh, he, but he, Maharaj is not there, right, Kostuba? He's not here now. No, not yet. He's not there now. Kostuba's there. Just landed in India. Mara's home at the fort, knitting away. And we are ready for winding up this fourth canto. Okay, yeah. that's Today, we'll probably wind it up today, right? It's exciting. It's exciting. It's crazy. If you're not listening on Zoom ever, if you ever think about joining us live, it's sort of fun. We have a whole little morning ritual where I say hello to everyone personally. And we talk. sometimes we just squirrel out on interesting topics. Today, we were talking about when bands get big, <laughs> how they don't even travel in the same bus. First of all, most bands don't travel in a bus. That is like you got to get to a certain level, have a certain amount of resources that you can travel in a bus. They're very expensive. You never got Sh- there? We got there a little. And then we got deep. <laughs> okay. the, there's nothing worse. And Parmananda will tell you there's Go nothing back. worse than touring in a bus. And then the next tour, touring in a van. It's sort of <laughs> like, oh. This hurts real bad. Was it good for you though? Was like a good austerity? Like it kept you like, you know, kept you sharp, or no? Touring in a van? No, yeah, it makes like... you feel like it makes you feel like a dirt bag. <laughs> like well, how old? It makes you start to reflect about life. Like what am I doing am I, here am with I my life? I'm this? still I'm too old traveling in a van. You know, sleeping on the floor. <laughs> um, but. No, but it, 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 you know, it just shows how the nature of comfort, once you upgrade and upgrade the comfort levels, then all of a sudden to go backwards, um, you start, um, rating things relatively, you know, we were joking about, um, that comedian who was, uh, saying how people are complaining on the phone that they, on the plane, that their internet's not working. It's like this. This technology is brand new and I'm just complaining about it. You know what people used to have to do to cross the country in a wagon. We're now doing it on the plane and we're complaining about the Internet not working. (laughs) And it's one of those things. It's like material comfort breeds more and more complaints. Almost. I want it now. I want to eat when I want to eat. I want it to eat 24 seven. You know, when Americans go to Europe and, you know, Europe shuts down the restaurants from like whatever it is, you know, four o'clock to six o'clock or seven o'clock, Americans lose their marbles. So as we just like make convenience in our culture, um, and, and the goal is convenience. People become a little bit more unsettled and intolerant. Oh, man, you know. I missed a verse that you guys read the, the, like yeah I just, uh, yesterday. Yeah. But it had, anyway, we I, I think it had something to do with this, right? Being one who can very cool, uh, being satisfied. The, text nineteen. We'll read it, but it talks about just like how being satisfied 
under any kind of condition, you know, like that kind of person is really qualified for bhakti. This brings me to another idea. Another lady wrote me in. I, ha- I should just read this e- email. I sent it to, sent it to you this morning you sent it about. To me? Yeah. Okay. You know, what? just don't worry. I'm just going to read it. OK. OK. I got it right here. But it, 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 it's about what the metric of privilege is and why do we always equate it with money? That's sort of what I took away from this lady's email. She's talking okay. about the uh, widows of Vrindavan, and we were talking about charities, and I think she, she got offended. And anyway, she wrote to apologize, but it was a good email. We'll talk about that later. Anyway, Mara, talk to us, Mara. By the way, there's going to be not that many squirrels today. We are going to go right through this. We're going to finish the fourth canto, and I'm just going to put that out there. But Mara, tell us about our giveaway, please. Oh, so if you want to win our mala beads from the silver telsi mala then you have to make a post with your uh about wisdom of the sages share it with three friends so tag three friends who you want to listen to it and tag wisdom of the sages and silver telsi mala hold it rogan sets off a whole marketing scheme to the day that i'm not there you go away for one day i'm taking over Okay. 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 And then what so, do you do? So, Once they do that, then you just randomly pick them or you pick Yeah, then we're going to randomly or? choose a winner and send them some beads from Silver Telsey Mala. Gorgeous beads. Beautiful stuff. I mean, yeah. Oh, my God. If you haven't been to their website, they're what's gorgeous. the website? They're uh, gorgeous. T- yeah. Telseymala.com. I'll post it on the, the chat. They're, they're taking gorgeous. malas to the next level. <laughs> they're not just they gorgeous. Used to- they're, gonna, they're made of holy Tulsi wood. Yeah. So Tulsi's it a goddess. It's, it'll, it's, it'll protect you. Oh, you know, it's crazy. There was, we're my, the kids aren't here, but oh, Moses is here. We, we went to the indoor water park yesterday. And um, I, yeah. And, and so I yeah, think you're really doing the family stuff. We're here, doing okay. the family thing. You know, I'm trying to create like a family thing here. It's been a tough year trying to like, you know, and uh, one lady was walking around. Ever see people like you think they're wearing Tulsi beads? It's almost like I was a stalker mm-hmm. following this one, <laughs> are those Tulsi woman beads around. <laughs> Is a, are those Tulsi beads or not? they look like they could have been? I was going to I was I was like, Hare Krishna. I was just I was walking <laughs> behind her, blurting out, you know, random Krishna things, hoping she would like I couldn't. I don't know. She never didn't respond. She never, you know, didn't respond. Yeah, and it's it's not like my crazy Sika's helping, you know. I'm trying to grow yeah, up. It looks my like Sika. a yamaka. She's like, why it, is this, it looks like this a rabbi strange. following me around? <laughs> <laughs> it looks crazy. It looks crazy. Even my why does he like wear that. the yamaka when he's in the in the water park? And I didn't realize how crazy I looked till I was like walking around in a bathing suit, which wasn't even my bathing suit because I forgot my bathing suit. So I'm wearing a gigantic pair of like Carhartt sh- shorts that. Shreedy Vyas let me borrow. I look like a, a nut yesterday walking around that water park with my crazy hair yarmulke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we lost him. There he okay, goes. All right, Ragna. Bring it back. Bring it back, guy. We got oh, a lot to do. He said we were working a lot. Are there any more announcements to make? Yeah, we do have we... some announcements. Okay. Can I... <laughs> yeah, we, have a, <laughs> we have a back to your recovery group meeting today at 1 p.m. And tomorrow's our Q&A day. So if people have questions, write to us at wisdomofthesages108 at gmail.com. Back at 8 o'clock tomorrow? Yep, back at 8 o'clock tomorrow. No. You, you okay, Rago? So sorry. I was, I was so <laughs> pathetic yesterday. I felt so bad for my children. <laughs> uh, let's, let's get into this. You ever have those times where your father is just like wearing saying? something ridiculous? And you're just like, oh, God, dad, don't walk next to me in the supermarket, Dad. That's where I was at yesterday. I've crossed that line. I've become that father. Okay. Where are we? Mara? Uh, do you want to say the invitation yeah, want to say the first? Yeah. Okay. I thought we were going to talk about touring on buses. Okay. You already did. All right. Narayanam namaskritya naram chayeva narotamam devim saraswatim vyasam tatojayam mudirayat. Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord Narayan. Unto Nara Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being. Unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning. And to Srila Vyasadev, the author. First word. 
Nasa Brahesha Vabreshu, Nityam Bhagavat Sevaya, Bhagavati Uttama Shloka, Shloke, Bhakti or Bhavati Naishtiki, by regular attendance and classes in the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotees, all that is troublesome to the heart will become eradicating. A loving service to the Supreme Lord, who is praised with transcendental songs, will be established as an irrevocable fact. Om Gyana Timarandasya Gyana Anjana Salakaya Chaksurun Mithatam Yena Tazmai Shri Gurveda Maha. I was born in the darkness of ignorance, and my teachers are opening my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer obeisances at their lotus feet. Reading from Srimad Bhagavatam. I, by the way, that I knew something was on your mind. <laughs> well, I was just trying to think. I was like, why are we talking about buses and you can't travel together in a bus with when bands get big? Well, this is actually like a super important spiritual principle. You're in a band, you're in a garage, you're playing music, you hope to make it big one day. Then you get a van, you save your money, you buy a van, you tour some local villages, local cities, you get it together. You get signed, you get a record contract, things are looking good. You know, all your, your best friends from high school, now you're in a band. Then you get signed and you get a record, your record becomes a hit record and people start appreciating you. Now, once you get material success, it starts exacerbating. All these things that we talk about are the original pollutants of the soul. You don't have to worry about herbicides, fungicides, pesticides. There's already pollutants of the soul out there. We call it kama, kroda, loba, moga, lust, greed, anger, those desires for um, profit, distinction, adoration. And that happens when our good karma you know, it hits peaks. And then all of a sudden, all those people that were our best friends that we we're touring with, now I'm seeing our egos grow because now we're thinking, yeah, I am popular. I am respected. It's about time people start to respect me. So we were just saying before the show started how you get to a certain modicum of, uh, of success in the music industry, say, and I can't even travel in the same tour bus with my van with my band i can't tolerate them i'll get up on stage and do my bit part but that's about it yeah. so it's it's interesting the very very uh thing that was holding you together the peace you had before success gone. It, it, it is gone you're you're now deeply woven in the matrix and you hear this so many times with success comes so much other things that you never thought was going to come up it, it, a bitterness competition envy of other people it brings out all these very dark qualities that you're either left to suffer with or try to like muscle your way above them i don't care I'm, you know, I'm doing my thing i'm making my money you know whatever or you have to like face off with these are my shortcomings i'm dealing with this, I mean, that, this is a very bhagavatam thing isn't it I suppose so. I mean, I guess it's saying that, you know, we're, well, we've talked about this before is that all those things that we desire most, they're Krishna's qualities. And that's why we're here because we're trying to take his position in a sense, right? So we want to be the most beautiful. We want to be the most wealthy. We want to be the most powerful, et cetera, et cetera. And, and, uh, and to whatever extent, whatever minuscule, <laughs> it, like it may be on a high level on this earth planet, right? Like we may rise to the highest level. Right. But even that's like totally minuscule. It's tiny. Right. It's tiny. But, but, but the point is we can't handle it. Even if we get a little something, a little fame, a little beauty, a little, you know, we, we can't handle it and, and our lives tend to crash. It seems like it's, it's a very, unless someone has some real solid grounding to some aspect of, you know, wisdom, some wisdom tradition, some, you know, solid kind of values that are holding them together. It seems like people commonly crash and they experience depression, they experience tons of anxiety, you know, you know, they turn to drugs, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> and there, and, and it's one of those things when you have a lot and then you, you, you have a lot to lose. Yeah. Like some people who had nothing, if you didn't own real estate in 2007, when there's a real estate crash, they didn't feel any, anything from it, you know, or if they were in the stock market crashes, if you don't have any money in the stock market, you don't lose it. If you have a lot invested, then you have a lot to lose. And it's really tied with your, because you're building it, you're saving it. And this is my, uh, uh, you know, these are all my properties and, and it's becoming part of your identity. And this is a whole nother um, view into the Bhagavatam is refocusing on what the identity is. And this is not like a random thing for a random weirdo who thinks I am this house. This is what we all do. 
Uh, this is my home. I identify myself with the way I decorate my home and the neighborhood and, and the block I purchased my home on or the neighborhood I purchased my home in or the city I purchased my home in or my co-op or my condo. And then when something happens and we lose that, it's as if we're losing our own body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Refocusing on what we are. And this is all what we're doing is we're creating like a safety net in the Bhagavatam by really by really meditating on uh, framing out what there is to lose and what you will never lose. And it, it points a pretty bleak picture, actually. Uh, what you're what you're going to lose, you're going to lose everything. <laughs> this is our good morning message today. You're about to lose everything, people. But, but in one it, sense, it's everything that's superficial. It's itself. everything that's not you. And yeah. of course, there's going to be loss and grieving and stuff like that. And that's natural. But I think when you go into this game with these essential truths, nothing's yours. That's an essential truth. And it's a great way to frame out life. Nothing's yours. We're not born to own anything or anybody. We are born to give love. Okay. Boss, enough. You know, and if you're doing that, you're winning. If you're not giving love, you're wasting precious time. Hmm. Okay. Write that stuff down, Mara. That was good. <laughs> what do you think, Mara? Yeah, I am. I'm writing it all down. She's on it. Thanks. Okay. All right. Where are we, Mara? Or did we say already? Yeah. We, we, did the we, we did the prayers. We did the giveaway. Uh, reading from Canto 4, Chapter 31, Text 21. Now, could we go back just for a second, Rogana? You want to redo everything that you did? Not everything. That you weren't. Well, I wasn't here, so we're redoing this it is, over. This no. Is related, this is related to what we're talking about. This text, number 19, because everything's right. What's happening right now, Rogana? This is so cool. It's a little heartbreaking, but mm -hmm. it's really cool. Is and I remember, you know, my wife and I were reading Bhagavatam together for some time. You know, we we're reading like eighty verses a day. That was our thing, right? Remember that? Uh, yeah, yeah. I was reading eighty-five. That was great. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but, um, but but we were we were reading eighty verses a day, and so and so we're moving through it, you know, relatively quickly. Yeah. And then we came to this point right here. You know what's happening right here, right now? What's about to happen? What is Vidur is going to say goodbye to Maitreya? Right. And that sacred meetings over this, this. We've been, you know, third camp. I think even in the second canto, um, Vidur was asking, I forget now, but I think yeah. maybe Vidur is asking my trade in the second canto, but certainly all the third canto, all the fourth canto is a conversation between these two sages up in Haridwar. And so now um, my tray is finishing off his message to Vidur and Vidur is going to say, thank you. You've given me all that I need to know now. And now I'm going to go back mm. to Hastinapur and I'm going to try to save my brother. All right. But, um, but in, so in this final message, we're really, he's kind of getting to this key point, this key theological idea of that the nectar of that relationship between the self and Krishna. And, and here we're hearing in, in this text, you, you almost get this simple little formula for how, what pleases, what kind of person is Krishna? What does he, what what makes him pleased with someone you, you know what attracts him to someone right you know it's a very and, if you want to fall in love you got to know these things yeah you got to yeah. know what your beloved likes that's right and, and 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 what your beloved likes says a lot about their character you right? know what i do to mara i bring her yarn here <laughs> here's some yarn here, here knit no, something for me <laughs> no, i will bring you yarn <laughs> But 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 you know what what the, your lover likes tells you a lot about the character of that person. So in hearing, in one sense, you can read this verse as like, what is the yogi supposed to be like, or what is the, you know, the self supposed to be like in relation to God, almost like in a religious sense. But in another sense, you can read it like, how do we understand who God is? What's God's heart is like? And so yeah. it gives like a one two three formula to please Krishna. Right. And it says three things by showing mercy to all living entities. Right? Hard work, because some yeah, living they, entities are not nice. <laughs> yeah, can be, but yeah. But then that takes that spiritual vision because they're all nice underneath. Right. So in order to see yeah. that, you have to have the spiritual vision. And then this one, the, which relates. Yeah, to I'm going to give you a good example that the yeah. other day, my okay. eight year old son said, oh, my God, 
Kelly, there's a tick on the floor. And, and the, everyone was like, kill it, kill it. And then he went back to kill it. And it was a, he goes, actually, it's a spider. OK, don't kill it. Don't kill it. Get where I'm going with that. We well, I'm kill not sure. one, but not another. Not the other, because the other one's dangerous. Because with the tick is dangerous. Tick, we all hate ticks. Maybe remove it from the area. But in any case, okay. I thought that was very, very good. Little comment, by the way. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't grade your comment high enough. <laughs> Excellent comment, Rogan. Excellent. <laughs> comment. <laughs> um, but so it's three things. One is showing mercy to all living beings, and one is to restrict oneself from sense enjoyment, which sounds like, oh, why do I got to do that? You know, because That's no fun. Another but, religion that says no fun. Yeah, but but the idea is because there's a lot more fun inside, right? There's yeah, a lot greater right. satisfaction within. You're just distracting yourself. From, but the other one was being satisfied somehow or other, right? That says so much about someone's character. Being sad, I don't need the big, you know, the big bus, the van. Okay, I'll ride in the van, you know? I don't need, you know when you meet people who are satisfied somehow or another, okay, maybe everything's not right. It's okay. Maybe the restaurant's closed at four o'clock. That's all right. Maybe it's not like this or not like that. You know, maybe there's no internet on the airplane. I'm okay. Well, that's I think what the, a yogi is like. Right? Well, you know, you jumped right over that. Be, what, the sense gratification one. What is it again? Okay. What, what number is this? 19. 19. 19. Yeah. I mean, that's a huge one. I think you could just like rally behind that once it restricting the senses from sense enjoyment. It sounds like God is in the business of dishing out no fun again. And it's just not that. I mean, indulgence is so miserable. Indulgence is miserable. It's like we need to almost like brand that on our bodies um, because it, it's, it's such the opposite of what the senses think will happen. Hmm. And I am the poster boy for, you know, thinking that pasta will fulfill me again. I'm falling into these holiday bad habits, Costuba. Holiday bad habits. Vegan cannolis, pasta. It's just like it's overwhelming. <laughs> it's just overwhelming. Anyway, it's 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 Let's a get great... you to the eco village. We're gonna get you on a good diet there. I know. I'm gonna get. Yeah. I know. I know. Okay. I apologize. Now your third one was. Well, it, and the third one was being satisfied somehow or other. Right, and that goes back to the tour buses. You know what? I'm good. I'll just go with whatever, and I'll just tolerate it, and I'll just deal with it. And I'm happy that we're going to play our gig. Yeah, it, it, it's it's you know again going back to like our very first episode and in a lot of what this podcast is about. You want to go deeper into yoga? Mm -hmm. This is what it looks like, right? Can I become that person that's satisfied somehow or another? Right? That's not getting upset over this and that. That's not you know, wasting time, wasting mental energy about some details that ultimately aren't so important because I've learned to be satisfied simply. You know, simplicity, kindness, these two. And this one has them both right there, right? By showing mercy to all living entities, by being satisfied somehow or other. Simplicity and kindness. You know, I asked and, a sadhu uh, once about uh, when do you endeavor for things? He gave me a good little analogy. You want to hear this? He said, yeah. when do you endeavor for things? How do you know it's not in over words, like, when it's worth it to work hard for something rather than just be yeah, satisfied? Yeah. He said, you reach your hand out and you reach it way out and it becomes you grab it. But if you reach so far out that you're tipping and falling, mm -hmm. you don't grab it. Good don't tip and fall. Just reach your hand out. And tip now, that and might fall sound, may that might sound like... lame compared if you're like an uh, Olympic athlete. Um, but you don't want to tip so far that. Well, it's no, it's actually a great analogy because you don't want to tip so far, reach so far over your own hanging on one foot. And then you're reaching your hand out and then you fall down because sometimes in the name of so-called perfection or becoming a virtuoso at something, people like lose themselves. You know, they, they lose their, uh, uh, they lose maybe um, their, their personal values or their personal principles or something like that. So maybe this is a perfect analogy. Well, I think even looking at it in a, in a similar way, but in other words, what does tipping over looks like? It looks like, when you say things like this, oh, I wish I had more time for my spiritual life. Well, actually, you do, <laughs> you know, you actually but it's do. Just that, yeah, but it's just that you're choosing to strive for other things that are distracting you from it. You know, there we go. And, yeah, yeah. All right. So anyway, that was text 19 and text 20 is a very beautiful verse where it's describing, you know, the heart of the devotee being completely cleansed of all material desires. The devotees are freed from all mental contamination. Yeah, we talked Thus, about brainwashing yesterday. Ah, okay. Brainwashed. And Kelly, Skinner's, they... Kelly Skinner's sister claimed she was brainwashed. Really? By whom? 
Oh, Kelly, that Kelly's brainwashed. Yeah, Kelly's. Oh, brainwashed. she's like saying, "By you guys, by you guys, <laughs> you, guys. <laughs> you, you brainwashed her." <laughs> okay, but it says, "Thus they can always think of the Lord constantly and address Him very feelingly." This is where Bhakti Yoga is meant to go, right? That right. with real feeling you feel something for God. You with real feeling you feel something for every living being, and then it and then then it begins to describe what what Krishna's like, and then it says. Uh, that he knows, knowing himself to be controlled by his devotees, mm. he does not leave them for a second. Just as the sky overhead never becomes invisible. This is, we're wrapping up the whole message. This is where Maitreya is ending his message, right? Who is Krishna? What does he look like? He's the one that knows he's controlled by the love of his devotees. That's, mm. that's this is the, the theological presentation in Srimad Bhagavatam. It's the highest, it's the highest of all the presentations, right? It's a God that is not interested in creation particularly not interested in judgment particularly only interested in love so much so that he becomes vulnerable and even controlled by the love of the devotee krishna okay. is the god of love so text 21. text 21 ready the supreme personality of godhead becomes very dear to those devotees who have no material possessions mm -hmm. but are fully happy in possessing the devotional service of the lord indeed the lord relishes the devotional activities of such devotees <laughs> i'm just going to read it those who are puffed up with material education wealth aristocracy and fruit of activity are very proud of possessing material things and they often deride the devotees even if such people offer the Lord worship, the Lord never accepts them. So here it is, a classic line of almost like the glorification of having nothing. <laughs> Our whole culture is we got to get stuff. We got to get stuff now. We got to bundle stuff. We got to, you know, we got to find, the, you know, the Black Friday deals. No, yeah. actually, it's when you have nothing, you're you're forced to sort of like figure out your pleasure from a from a more subtle way <clears throat> and uh you know this is an interesting thing and i'd like to bring up uh you want to comment on this i'm going to pull up an email somebody wrote well when i comment i will i like for you to be there with me right i'm gonna now. i'm gonna come i'm gonna listen and okay. pull up this email well well a couple things first of all that if we look at these two texts again it's another juxtaposition right text yeah. 20 described what krishna does accept right and he accepts, you know, people that are, um, you know, free of of all of their, you know, whose material, who free of material desires. They're not concerned with anything. People, and and going back to text nineteen, free from sense enjoyment, kind to every living being, satisfied somehow or another. What doesn't he accept? What is he not interested in? Mm. You know, your wealth. Oh, you know, I did this big fancy puja and spent all this money I gave to the church, and they built this whole wing and they named it after me. And no. Right. That doesn't impress him at all. It doesn't touch him. Doesn't move him. Right. Aristocracy. I'm born in this special family. You know, mm -hmm. we have very high standards and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Not not at all impressed by that. You know, fruit of activity. I've done so many, you know, apparently good works, you know, you know, trying to reap good results. Not at all interested in it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm proud of my material things. Not interested in it. None of these things touch him. None of these things move him. You had that letter you want to read or something? Oh, yeah. Um, this was from a, a nice lady, Teresa, who's been listening to our show from, from she lives from England, but she lives from in Vrindavan now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, you remember her? Teresa Foxglove? Yeah, anyway. She comments sometimes on... Um, yeah, yeah, on our YouTube, YouTube videos, yeah. On YouTube. Yeah. Uh, it's wonder, a nice lady. And she works with like a lot of the widows of Vrindavan. And... Um, <clears throat> Uh, sometimes, you know, the public journalists will like uh, paint out the pictures of the widows in Vrindavan to be this horrific, destitute women who are struggling for survival and you've never seen anything so horrible. And then she writes in, you know, and uh, she writes, you know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm particularly sensitive to the ideas that India is a poor or developing country and that Indians are basically poor. I'm a retired hospice nurse. Before coming to India, I worked in many nursing homes in England in order to supplement my funds for coming to India. Now I live a 10-minute walk from Bhajan Ashram at Gopinath Bazaar in Vrindavan, which is the largest ashram for widows in Vrindavan. 
I'm very familiar with these widows, and I've also befriended individual widows and contributed to their support. I can tell you that the quality of life these widows is far superior to the old people in Western nursing homes who are parked in front of the television for a greater part of the day and have little social stimulation. Maybe things have changed since I came to India 22 years ago, but in England, when I nursed, the majority of older people in care reside in government nursing homes. Although their material needs are certainly met, they are warm, they are fed, they are clothed, their quality of life is such that I would personally rather be dead. In fact, they are dead while alive. It's often hard to judge the level of comfort or material support that is actually needed by the widows and others and others judged as poor in India. One well-educated Indian doctor I talked to noted that although, uh, although foreigners are appalled by open sewage drains, rubbish in the streets, etc. in India, he said, Indians just don't care about those things. And he said, now, that's a controversial, she said, this is a controversial statement, but what is significant to consider is what they do care about. Um, uh, they care about family, social relations, and they care about their village community, and they care very much about their spiritual lives. This, anyway, I, I could go on a little bit more. She's talking about how the, the people just take baths in this ice cold water. Now, by American standards, that's like you're torturing these people. But that's the least saying that that is just like common. That, that's very low on the metric of deeper pleasures. Um I'm going to stop right there. But, <laughs> okay. All right. You know, how Thank did this tie in what we were talking about? I mean, I had, there was a bridge there, Costuba. Well, anyway, we were just reading those two. Um, by the way, I just want to mention to Teresa, I wasn't offended at all. I, I did see her comment. Um, I think I mentioned that India was a developing country. And then I, I was, you know, of course, not spiritually, but I was speaking on the economically, you know, in terms of its kind of, um, you know, uh, well, especially economically, and what what would it, what would be the what's the term? You know, when you're trying to like um, all the things that kind of like hold a city together, some of like that. You know, like in other words, it's like she was saying, the, the infrastructure, that kind of stuff. Right. You know, that stuff's right. developing, and, and 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 it's hard for it to develop so quick. You know, we're like in the West, it developed in one sense over a century. In India, it developed in a couple decades, and mm. it's, it's uh, and it's hard to hold it all together. But I, I certainly wasn't offended. And I agree with everything that she's saying. And, you know, that's yeah. why I'm that's why I keep going back all these years. That's why I'm back here right now. Um, OK, you know, but we, we did see a nice I also saw a nice little message on the chat board here from Pamela that was getting back to what we were talking about. Well, she, she said that that's how I knew that hearing the Bhagavatam was changing me. Right. And this is what ultimately we're is meant to happen right? through us getting together like this and hearing from Bhagavatam. She says that she would feel surprised in herself at feeling satisfied in situations that would normally be so aggravating. Sure. So that's, that's part of what it means to be advancing in yoga. Sure. Um, okay. You know, also just happened to Teresa's thing that another metric for our, our, our um, material comfort, if you really want to get down to it is, do we have relationships with people? Do we have a community? Do we have friends? Do we, what, and is the perfection of life just to be in a comfortable, warm bed with the TV playing? Is that where we're going with old age and retirement? Hmm. So, um, yeah, so there's d different ways to metric, uh, to measure rather our, our, um, our, our real happiness. Pamela pointed out that one, just like, yeah, I can deal with things better. And I think just having this wisdom of the sages community, it's sort of like, yeah, I have people in my life that we were connected to. And it's not just virtual people are just making friends from this um, podcast and, and building communities wherever they go. So this is like a new standard of a way to measure life, life success. Who wants to be very successful where I can't even tolerate my bass player. They have to travel in a separate <laughs> Greyhound bus. Right. Okay. Uh, so, so, so we're just we're we're almost finished here. We're, my trays are maybe about to share his last words, and I think you know what. Although it's not mentioned here, but 
when I picture this scene in my mind and this verse, um, you know, you can picture him like with tears in his eyes. You know, this is like a soft hearted, deeply advanced bhakti yogi, you know. This is a, you know, real sadhu. And he's sharing from his heart what he knows, what he's experienced, what he feels for God, for Krishna. And, and he's wrapping up this message. And so when he says this, you know, it's something that if we open our heart up to it, you know, it can transfer. But uh, text 22. Although the Supreme Personality of Godhead is self-sufficient, he becomes dependent on his devotees. What? <laughs> what a crazy statement, right? He yeah. does not care for the goddess of fortune, nor the kings and the demigods who are after the favors of the goddess of fortune. Interesting. Where is that person who is actually grateful and will not worship the personality of Godhead? So this is his last words to, to Vidura. In, in other words, he, and, and by the way, just like the phrasing can maybe be a little confusing here sometimes, right? Like when he says, he does not care for the goddess of fortune. You know, what? the way that I understand that is that, and, and it's being mentioned here, that people worship the goddess of fortune because they want wealth from her. He's self-sufficient. He doesn't need that from her. That he's got no interest in that kind of yeah. thing, right? He's not yeah. like he's not like us that are that we want the things of this world. This goddess of fortune could grant so much. He doesn't care about that at all. Mm. He, he he's 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 self-sufficient. He doesn't care about any kind of material boon that other people desire so much. Even highly, you know, even people that are very highly achieved materially, those things don't interest him he actually is only interested in love and he becomes dependent on his devotee right mm -hmm. although he's all powerful although he's we could read on and on other verses glorify you know you could go to the hymns of the vedas and you know everything you know the universes are coming from his breathing you know it, it, he, he but he becomes dependent voluntarily because all he's interested in is love so then so so you can imagine you know like um my tray here you know his voice choking up and saying, who, who, who couldn't love him? He, he, he has all power, and, and still he voluntarily becomes dependent just for the sake of love. How could you not <laughs> love this God, right? How could you right. not love him? It's verses like this that these, that these sadhus, that these sages, they, they think very deeply about. It's a very special theology, you know, when you really get into it. it it's, I, I'm no master of theology or anything, but... From what I've seen in my, you know, studies, I don't think there's any other spiritual tradition that gives as thorough a description of that the the figure of God as we'll find in Bhagavatam and these, you know, Vedic texts. Um, and and here it's being revealed, you know, why he's so. This is meant to prepare us for that when we get to that tenth canto, mm. which is describing Krishna's whole life. We begin to understand who who is this person. Everything that he's doing, when he's slaying a demon, you know, when he's stealing the clothes of the gopis, when he's, you know, uh, devouring a forest fire, when he's dancing on the the snake Kalia in, in the in the in the river, he's doing that all for the sake of love, and that's that's it's his only interest. My son sometimes asks, like, "Well, why did this happen? Why didn't just Krishna kill them all? Why didn't Balaram just take them all out?" I said, and I say, he's doing it for you. <laughs> he's doing it for you. Because when you hear these stories, you become attracted to it. And, and, that's, and look at us. We're, we're, again, reading these stories, hearing about it, and we're, we're actually falling in love with Krishna. The, the, um, the, there's the key. There's a special – anytime you're reading 10th Canto of Bhagavatam, you're hearing a story about Krishna, and you're trying to understand why. Why is he doing that? Why is he behaving that way? It's always going to go. There'll be, and there may be many layers of answers. But the in the end, the the final and most essential answer answer, it always has to do with the love between him and his devotees. Mm -hmm. That's that's always the point. All right, Mara, what text are we on? Twenty three. Uh, okay, the great sage Maitreya. Maybe that'll be your name, Mara. Maitreya. Maybe. Maitreyani. The great sage Maitreya, Maitreya. continued. Maitreya. That'd be awkward. <laughs> Let's Maitreya. think of a new one. <laughs> my dear king vidura sri narada muni the son of lord brahma thus described all these relationships with the supreme personality of godhead to the prachetas afterwards he returned to brahma loka oh, i was making a total mistake the whole time that was narada muni speaking that wasn't my now we're getting my tray 
Uh, that was not hearing from Narada's mouth yeah. the glories of the Lord, which vanquished all the ill fortune of this world. The Protetas also became attached to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Meditating on his lotus feet, they advanced to the ultimate destination. That's our method, right? Shoving them first, right? Hearing. Simply by hearing from this person. It changed their consciousness. Mm hmm. My dear Vidura, I've told you everything you wanted to know about the conversation between Narada and the Prachetas, the conversation describing the Lord, uh, describing the glories of the Lord. I have related this as far as possible. Sukadev Goswami continued, O best of the kings, King Prichet. So I that was now... it. That was the end of the conversation right there between Vidura well, and Maitreya. Yeah. Now we go back up to Sage level two. Yeah. So, because they, because Sukadeva Swami is telling the story of these two sages speaking. Yeah. Oh, best of the kings, King Pricket, I have now finished telling you, telling about the descendants of the first son of Swayam Bhuvamanu Uttanapad. I shall now relate to you the activities of the descendants of Priyavrata, the second son of Swayam Bhuvamanu. Oh. Please hear attentively. Well, you know, you see what, what that's referring to right there is if you look at the entire fourth canto that we just have read we spent a year on it right wow yeah so so we started with it's you have krishna from or or lord vishnu and from his navel lord brahma is born right mm -hmm. and brahma has many sons some of them are born from like his mind right sure like marichi Pulastya, Angirda, Vaishista, Pulaha, Brigu, Kratu, the four Kumaras, Nardamuni, Atri. So a whole big sections of the Bhagavatam are coming in like family trees coming from them and all their descendants. Right? We'll hear we'll hear about that more as we read in further cantos. But in the third canto, but, but then there's another there's another son, Swain Bhuvamanu. Right? And Swayam Bhuva has five kids. And so in the third canto, we're hearing about the, the, the lineages stemming from his daughters, like Devahuti especially, right? We heard about Devahuti in the third canto. Um, we heard about um, <coughs> Kasyapa and, um, and uh, of course, Lord Kapila. In the fourth canto, we're following one of his sons, Uttanapad, and all the descendants that come from him. So do you remember who Utanapad Mara, let's the, if Mara, if you get this, I'm gonna be impressed. Do you remember who Utanapad's son was? You got this, Mara. Utanapad's son. Moses. Y yes. Boom. Mara. Oh. Yes. Oh. I don't think Moses yes, had it. Mara. Okay. <laughs> so so we you know, this whole fourth canto is just following one branch of this tree down, right? a branch that you know branch and sub branch so the branch that's coming from brahma through swine Bhuvamanu, and then from swine Bhuvamanu through his son utanapad we heard about utanapad's son Druva. that's where we began in the fourth canto and you know it continued we going down that line we heard about unga king unga and unga's son uh vena you know the evil king vena and then we heard about how in a, the, the 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 descendant of vena who was churned from his thigh, right, was Prithu. Mm -hmm. And, and Prithu, you know, we, we read a lot about Prithu. And then it continued down, you know, the descendants of Prithu continued till we got to um, King Barhishat or Prachini Barhi. And we just, you know, the end of the fourth canto was having to do with his, conversa his conversations with Narda and then his son's conversation with Narda, the Prachetas. And so that's the that's what we follow in the fourth canto. Now, in this verse right here, where Sugade Goswami says, I have now finished telling you about the descendants of the first son of Swayam Bhuvamanu Tanapad. I shall now try to relate to you the activities of the descendants of Priyavrata, the second son of Swayam Bhuvamanu. Please hear hear them attentively. That's next canto, fifth canto. We're gonna go down that branch of the tree and hear about all those descendants and the special the special people born into that dynasty and 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 um all they had to share so you know it's, it's 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 interesting to look at the family tree and kind of break it all down all righty mara guess what time it is 
Oh, takeaway time, but we didn't it's, finish. We didn't finish the chapter and we still got six minutes. Oh, all right. All right. <laughs> all right. Okay. Forget it. Which, <laughs> what text are we Let's on? Let's get going. 27. We're on text 27. We can yeah. do this. We got four oh, verses. Easily. Although Maharaj Pri- or although Maharaj Priyavrata received instructions from the great sage Narada, he is still engaged in ruling the earth. After fully enjoying material possessions, he divided his property among his sons. He then attained a position by which he could return back home, back to Godhead. Okay. Text 28. My dear king, in this way, after hearing the transcendental messages of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and his devotees from the great sage Maitreya, the doer was overwhelmed with ecstasy. With tears in his eyes, he immediately fell down at the lotus feet of his guru, his spiritual master. He then fixed the Supreme Personality of Godhead within the core of his heart. Hmm. The doer said, O great mystic. O greatest of all devotees, by your causeless mercy, I've been shown the path of liberation from the world of darkness. By following this path, a person liberated from the material world can return home back to Godhead. What's the translation of Godhead there? It's curious. Um, It's a para, the other side. The but, higher uh, world. The, the higher the world. Higher, okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll take that. Um, <laughs> but, you know, really, R- Raghunath, right here in these two verses, this is re- – people talk about bhakti yoga, and they think of it as a kumbaya. You sit yeah, in a circle, and you're singing this. Uh, th- I'm not saying it's not. It but, is. But, but, I'm, <laughs> but I'm saying it's much more than that. And these verses really speak to that. You know, here you have this sage with tears in his eyes bowing down to his guru because he's heard from him. And by hearing from him, he was given the kind of, he was able to take his mind and transform it. And that's what yoga is, right? So that he had God fixed within the core of his heart. That's where it's going. Mm-hmm. You know, that's where it's all meant to go. And not just like talk, but that really happens, <laughs> you know, that you're walking around feeling the presence of God in your heart at every moment with deep affection. That's, that's our natural state. That's where we're meant to be. That's what Vidura achieved by hearing from Maitreya. And that's what we're being shown as th- as this incredibly special and powerful path of yoga here in the fourth canto. All right. I'm going to finish this up. Ready? Text 29. Yeah. Text 29. You just read that. 30. Read. Text 30. Sukadeva Goswami said, Vidura thus offered obeisances unto the great sage Maitreya and taking his permission, right? They always take my, do I have your permission to leave? Started for the city of Hastinapur to see his own kinsman, although he had no material desires, right? This is something that we read. Right, because he comes back, he tells Drita Rostra to quit home, to leave home. So he wasn't going to the, he wasn't leaving the force to go to the kingdom to get yeah. Material company. I'm gonna he rest. Going I'm gonna rest mission. up. I'm gonna get a hot bath. <laughs> Wasn't like that. I'm gonna, you know, get some. Okay. Oh, King. Those who hear these oh, topics. You know what oh, this is, Raghunath? This, this last... is the Paul Shruti. That's right. This is the fruit of hearing. The fruit of hearing. This okay. Is for the Those last, who... what we've been doing for the whole last year, right? Here, this, now is, we hear better. this is what? the fruit we're gonna get this for it. Oh, King. Those who hear these topics about kings who are completely surrendered to the personality of Godhead, obtain without difficulty a long life, wealth, good reputation, good fortune, and ultimately the opportunity to return home back to Godhead. Harry Bowl. Thus ends the fourth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, the 31st chapter of the fourth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam and the entire fourth canto. We did it, Ragnas. Harry Bowl, we made it. We made Every it. Year we've been doing it. Like Thank that. you, everybody. Thanks. Thank you, Mara. Thank you for doing this some, with us. Everybody. Gotta give some Fourth credit Canto. to Mara here. Mara. Thank you, Mara. Hanging Thank you, everyone. guys. Hanging in there. We feel like we got to a momentous occasion. <sighs> you want some takeaways for today? Oh yeah. I was like, why isn't the music playing? What are our takeaways? <laughs> Convenience and material comfort breeds complaints and intolerance. Oh yeah. <laughs> Everybody Six. in the message board is saying they're much more tolerant. Good, Success yeah. may not bring peace. Oh, oh no. May bring oh, the no. <laughs> Our deepest desires are Krishna's qualities. 
What? Uh, kind of, we so, want to be beautiful. We want to be powerful. We want yeah. to be Oh, famous. okay. Yeah, All yeah, of Krishna's yeah. opulences. Yeah. Our material desires are Krishna's opulences. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Refocus on what we are. Okay. Yeah. You're about <laughs> to lose everything. Yeah. That's your message <laughs> of the day. That what a t shirt that would be. You're yeah. about to lose everything. <laughs> or you got like a pull out a gun or something. <laughs> 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 there is. There's a big universal gun pointing right at our heads. Yeah. yeah. You're about to lose it all. Hold okay. on to hold on to the essential truth that nothing is ours. Oh yeah. Okay. Ooh. Let's hang on to what we don't got. <laughs> there you go. There, 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 there. We're born Little to give Frankie love. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> he looks so bewildered. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, we're born to give love or wasting precious time. That's right. Wasting precious time. We're reach out. Love. Reach out, but don't tip and fall. That's reach right. out, but don't tip and fall. Ooh, yeah. that's a good one. Make relationships and community our metric of success. Okay. Okay. And okay. love of God. Yeah, sure. And, yes. and do -do 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 -do. indulgence is miserable. Indulgence is indulgence. miserable. Indulgence. What a beautiful way to end the fourth camp. Ah, indulgence <laughs> is miserable. It's good for a moment or so. And then it becomes so sad. What have I done? Thanks, to everybody, for joining us. Thanks, to everybody, who support us. Our community-supported podcast is done every day. And you can support us by going to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. Thanks, everybody. Grateful. We're going to be back in Mara's tomorrow, and uh, we're doing Q&A day, 8 a.m. Looking forward to that. Looking forward to hopping on a plane and seeing Kastuba on the other side, and yeah. then doing this whole podcast while we're in India for like six, seven weeks. Really looking forward to it and dragging a bunch of the uh, Zoomers and others with us, including Kelly Skinner and Jeeva G Life Coaching and Bobby Marchand and Cindy Lunsford. And who else we got going? Any guys coming? Jeff Lieberman. Okay. Yeah, we got guys. We got Bob guys. Healy. And Bob Healy is oh, coming. Bob's coming. Awesome. Yeah. Bob's coming. He's going to be on our flight. Oh, that's great news. Yeah. We got a crew. We got a posse. I'm looking forward to it. It's at the show's at 8 a.m. tomorrow. G -G. Show's at 8 a.m., people. <laughs> All right. So I which think one I'll be more? At the Govardhan Eco Village tomorrow, hopefully. It, it, oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ooh. Well, it's one more day, and you know who's going to be there? Uh, Kumi is coming with a group. Um, oh, I love California. Kumi. She's coming on the twenty-first. Her group. She's doing a teacher like training. Like old times, there. just like old times. I know. Ah, and uh, this is—I kind of feels to me like not that COVID is one hundred percent over, but in a sense that era is is done because I'm back in India That's after three years, and oh, then uh, and then kind of. Being with us, a lot of the same people again who I haven't seen in years now. Yeah, 